Welcome back, everybody. Well, we are all about Mexican food on today's show. I happen to love Mexican food. So does my family. So I'm starting to make more and more of it at home. And there's just so many fun things that you can do with it just to, you know, aliven those taste buds. So I'm going to show you the classic way to do homemade guacamole. And I've been fortunate enough to go to Mexico a few times. And I love the guacamole there because they do it table side. They do it fresh right there for you. And not many restaurants around here do it. More and more are starting to. But um, that really is the way to serve guacamole and the way to make guacamole. It's one of those things, and I get asked this all the time. If I'm having people over for a party, I really want to make the guacamole ahead of time. And what I say to them is, you can pre-dice your onions, you can pre-dice your, your pepper, um, your jalapeno, and your, your tomato. You can kind of get it all ready, but it's, it's very hard to make guacamole ahead of time because it, it turns brown very, very quickly. And the ultimate, I'm not saying you can't do it, and there are tips, you can use lime juice, you can put the tip or the pit of the avocado in with the guacamole, that can help brown mean. You can put plastic wrap right on the top. But for the ultimate guacamole, it really is made fresh and served right then. So that's how they do it in Mexico, and that's how I do it at my house. So as I said, there are certain things that you can prep ahead of time. So we've got some red onion that we've, um, already got diced up here, or you can use yellow onion. It's optional or not whether you want to put tomato in your guacamole. I happen to like a little bit of tomato in there. So this is just Roma tomato um, that's been seeded and diced. I love a little heat in my guacamole, so this is optional. So I'm going to do a jalapeno pepper, but I'm going to not use the ribs or the seeds. So that's going to give a little bit of heat, but it, don't worry, it's not going to burn your mouth off. And these peppers used to be a lot hotter than they, they are now. Now, if you really want heat, you should go for some of the other peppers, not really jalapeno, because they're more middle of the road. I just really like the flavor of them. And sometimes if you go to one of those Mexican restaurants where they do the guacamole table side, they'll ask whether you want jalapeno in there or not. And if you just very, very finely dice it up, you're just going to get a hint of great flavor and just a hint of heat. So I happen to love it in there. My daughter, Ireland, is a huge guacamole nut. Um, she wouldn't want the jalapeno in there, so I may make a batch for her uh, without and then add some to mine. All right, so now all our components are now all ready to go. So this is the stuff you can have done ahead of time. But as, as I said, then when it comes to the avocado, really best to use that at the very last second. So you go to the grocery store. I always try and figure out when I'm going to make guacamole. It's usually one of those things, unless I, I'm at the grocery store and the avocados are perfectly ripe, then I might say, hey, tonight's a guacamole a night. But nine times out of ten, um, you're not going to find those perfectly ripe avocados right then at the grocery store. So what you have to do is buy them. And I love to just put them in a brown bag and set them on your counter. Do not refrigerate them, and they will ripen right in the brown bag. Now, for the perfect avocado, and if I'm making guacamole, I, this recipe happens to call, oh, I just want to check my tortilla chips that are in here. Woo. Yeah, caught them just in time. And we're going to be making homemade tortilla chips in just a little bit, so I don't want those to overdo it. I'll show you how we make those coming up in just a minute. But anyway, back to the guacamole. Uh, you don't want to get the really, really, really soft avocado, and you don't want to get the rock-hard avocado. So that's why I like to buy them a couple days ahead of time have them on my counter in a brown paper bag, and then I know when they're perfectly ripe. And this is perfect. And I always buy one to two extra avocado because sometimes you don't, they may feel great, but once you get in there, you don't have a good avocado. And then you've got to run back to the store and start all over again, which is no fun. So what I do for my avocado, as I was just taking off this sticker, is I cut through it like this. Anne's a nervous wreck over there. Anne, I, I've done this a million times. So don't worry. And then it just easily breaks apart like that. Then I get the pit and get that out of there. My grandmother used to plant those, and we seriously have like avocado trees. I'm not yeah. kidding. Yes, yeah, she had a certain way to do it. Not in, this was in, I grew up in Arizona, so they wouldn't grow very well around here. But so then I just, Take a knife and kind of score the avocado. 
and scoop it all out this way. So it's really easy to do. Once you start doing it a million times, it's one of the easiest to work with, unlike like mangoes are kind of hard to work with. And it, this is really easy to get at. Once you get that pit out of there, and the, it's a nice big pit, so it's just super easy to remove. Okay, we'll do that one more time, just so that you can get the hang of it. So again, and don't worry, I'll be okay. These avocados are perfectly ripe. That, that one was anyway. We'll see what we get. It's always a surprise. Twist it. Oh, another perfect one. This is going to be a good day. I need to go out and buy a lottery ticket. What I love about avocado and guacamole is that I'm a dipper. I'm a double, I'm a triple dipper. Um, if I get my own little container, I can dip all I want. And for avocado and guacamole, it's one of those pretty much guilt-free dips. No mayo in this, no sour cream. I know some people add that to their guacamole. Not this recipe. It's so simple and everyone loves it. And it really is all about the avocado. Which is very good fat, as Ann finished my sentence and I needed her to. Okay, so one of Ireland's good friends, um, her mother is from Mexico, and she's come over to my house and done some cooking, and it's always great fun. Um, but she uses a potato masher, which is a great tip to mash up your guacamole, now your avocados. I happen to like a pretty chunky guacamole, so I don't like it real smooth, but it's up to you. If you like it real smooth, just keep mashing. I like it pretty chunky, and I love the idea of using a potato masher. It really works nice. Salt, good pinch of salt too. Tomato, onion, I just do a little onion. I don't do too much. A little bit of jalapeno pepper, and the one thing we're missing here, Ann, cilantro. And I like a lot of cilantro, so let's see. There we go. It's up to you how much cilantro you want to put in or if you want to put it in at all. Some people do not like cilantro. Uh, it really does have a strong flavor and some people love it, some people not so much. So just take a little bit of it. And it's one of those things where you, when you chop it up, it really releases the flavor. So really give it a nice chop. And that's it. It's the simplest recipe. A little bit of lime juice, and I just do a, just a touch of it. That adds some flavor and uh, you know helps with helps prevent the guacamole from browning, or the yeah the avocados from turning. But I don't want it, the, the lime juice to overpower it, so I just do a little bit. And this is it. Super simple. Great on all sorts of different Mexican food, but I like it just straight up with tortilla chips. And later we're going to make some really nice crispy baked tortilla chips. And you've got a great healthy snack or a great start to your Mexican fiesta with this pretty much guilt-free guacamole and homemade baked chips. Maybe a little cilantro or some jalapeno peppers on top. There you go. And we'll put the recipe, by the way, on our website. Coming up. We've got some more fun Mexican ideas and recipes. Why not spice up your potato skins? We've got a fun recipe and later those homemade crispy baked tortilla chips I was talking about. So stay with us.